This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. World AIDS Day Worldwide, live from Joy 94.9, Melbourne, Australia, host city of AIDS 2014. I'm Lini Fabry, streaming globally at worldaidsdayworldwide.org. I'm the manager of people, services and culture here at Joy 94.9. That means I manage the Joy volunteers and teach the Taste of Radio broadcast course. You can visit joy.org.au to learn more about volunteering, becoming a member and the 2014 Taste of Radio courses. Joy turns 20 today and to mark this milestone, we're going to flick through the photo album and focusing on the last 11 years. You, me and a handful of some very special guests. A former president, an ex-station manager and a former program and volunteer manager, an ex-engineer and a current vice president. Sounds like a great mix of subjects, hey? So let's make sure we stay connected through the next hour. Stream radio and images via worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Email in and join the conversation at onair at joy.org.au and social media buffs get on twitter hashtag joy w a d our first guest on joy 94.9 was the first paid station manager of the organization he relocated from perth where he worked with the western australia aids council all the way from singapore welcome back to joy 94.9 paul paul turdich Hi, Lenny. Thanks for inviting me on air. Thanks so much for being with us. It's Joy's 20th birthday. Birthdays are often a time for reflection. When you think of Joy, what comes to mind for you now? I still remember the mission statement. It it came about in the first uh, six months or so that I was there, and it was the, in some ways the linchpin and the focus that um, kind of gelled and helped push together all of the things that we needed to do um, to work towards the full-time licence. So you were tasked with formalising the station's operations and governance while coordinating 200 volunteers. Where did you start and what were your priorities? Well, actually, it was about 50 volunteers at that time and only um, a few hundred members. So in terms of in terms of uh, planning a strategy, it was formalising all of the on all of the functions of the of the radio station and making sure that we stayed on air. Um, one of the first things uh, that came about when I first started was um, that we were going to have to share the frequency, which was 90.7 back then, with uh, no, with a number of other stations. And we had to negotiate because we were all test licensees who were going to bid for a full-time licence. And who were some of the other stations that we were sharing the frequency with? Well, a couple of dance music stations. Um, there was uh, Laugh Radio. There was a Christian radio station, um, an Indigenous radio station, a uh, student radio station from RMIT, and also um, a Muslim community radio station. Wow! And and, um, and the first and the first uh, sort of meeting took place, I think, uh, about two or three weeks after I started at the station, and it happened at Joy. I pulled I pulled it together so that um, we could have it at Joy. And uh, what we ended up doing was sharing the frequency with um, Muslim Community Information Radio Service and, um, and the Indigenous radio station. Which really encapsulates the whole like, value system of community radio, getting everybody of different beliefs and um, values together. Yes, well, look, it, it took a bit of effort, but really understanding from each of the groups, which is actually quite wonderful because we were actually competing and um, any of us could have lost out and not got a licence. And in fact, um, we were the one who got the licence that we we really wanted and the Muslim Community Radio Service didn't get one. So community radio exists to give people of a community, of community, of a particular community of interest. In our case, it's the GLBTI community, the mm. access to represent ourselves or for the community to access information. You were not only pivotal, pivotal in building joy as a stable community resource, but you were mm. also pivotal in um, 
making sure that the community radio sector took notice of joy. What are some of your memories and thoughts of those years where you were involved as the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia's president? Well, um, I got involved. I got involved in the first year that uh, that I was at Choi, and we went along to the co- annual conference. There's an annual CBAA conference, and it was clear to me that this was something that we needed to be a part of. That we could certainly learn a lot um, from other broadcasters, and we hadn't really engaged very much with them before. And um, there were lots of lots of really experienced people in community radio who we could. Uh, tap on, work with, and um, hopefully we could contribute as well. And, and certainly some people in the sector were very excited about there being uh, gee, a gay and lesbian radio station um, that was that was hopefully getting a full-time licence. Absolutely. Well, it worked because every everywhere we go around the country, people go, oh, yeah, I love Joy. Mm. So thank you for the work you did in the community. So... When you think back of the time you were involved as the station manager at Joy, mm. what are some of your proudest achievements, Paul? Look, I think, I think for me, not being a radio person and coming into uh, a community radio station where nearly everyone was... They were, they were really focused on their radio. And for me coming in, I think part of the reason they uh, selected me for the role was I had community development experience and... Um, it's, it was really looking at Joy as being, it had a community purpose, it could really achieve some amazing things and understanding, ending up understanding what being part of, a, being a media organisation was, to have that voice, to have that um, reach and power to touch people's lives and change them and particularly for our community which is often isolated and doesn't have a voice through other media or was ostracised or was, you know, mislabeled in so many different ways. So for, for me, looking at Joy's development, it was really about um, getting as many people involved as possible and moving on from uh, what the organisation was, which was fantastic in terms of having lots of radio, lots of resources, people really put blood, sweat and tears, such as uh, John Oliver, who started the station, um, to take it to the next level. And part of that was... Uh, it wasn't me, it was a whole lot of other people and it was people who decided to get involved and contribute and these were people from all walks of life and they didn't necessarily want to be on air or be on radio but they saw the power of joy and what joy could be and they had different skill sets and they wanted to contribute and that kept on being the story all the way through and, and there's people like Anne who helped formalise uh, what were our policy and procedures, which took, I think, over a year to really document everything that we needed to know to understand how we could operate as a professional organisation. And that was fantastic. And there are so many other stories like that where people have come in with marketing expertise or or management expertise or legal expertise or all sorts of things. But people working behind the scenes, we really have a strong base behind the scenes who listeners never hear who really make it all work. And that is still happening to to this day. People yeah. with the skills behind the scenes and those core um, documents that we need to have the framework behind us are being developed and are continual working documents. So thank you for helping setting that up for us, Paul. And we really do value your um, contribution to the organisation. And thank you so much for joining us on our 20th birthday celebration. Paul Turdich, former station manager all the way from Singapore. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're on World AIDS Day Worldwide, Joy 94.9. Let's stay connected, jump online, check out World AIDS Day Worldwide, worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Um, I'd love to get an email from you. The address is on air at joy.org.au. For tweeters, it's hashtag joywad. Our next guest on World AIDS Day Worldwide on Joy 94.9 was for many years Joy's engineer. She's the main broadcaster and producer of the only transgender radio program in the world. 
Transmission time, she's beautiful inside and out. Welcome to our special 20th birthday celebration broadcast slash World AIDS Day worldwide, Jane Munro. Thank you very much, Lainey. Why did you choose to volunteer at Australia's only gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex community radio station, Jane? I sort of got talked into it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, Some friends of mine um, back in, in, I think it was uh, 98, um, decided to contact Joy and put together a transgender radio show. And they needed to make a demo tape. Now, to make the demo tape, they had to have equipment to make it at home. I was the person that supplied the equipment and did the sort of the mastering of the original. And when the um, the proposal was basically accepted by Joy, I somehow joined the team, and, uh, and it just developed from there. So how did you end up talking on mic though? <laughs> so that often happens. That's the story. People come in and say, "Oh, I don't want to be on air." Well, there are originally four of us uh, doing it. And um, I, I suppose um, we all had something to offer. Um, there were two of us who had skills in operating the, the, the then desk that we had at the time down in Coventry Street. And, and uh, the two of us used to take it in turns and the other two who were on the team basically just talked and did research. And then later on, um, as uh, there were, uh, we had a number of people sort of come and go on the show over the years. And eventually it ended up as basically the Jane and Lauren show. <laughs> um, and I think I did the, the program production from about program about 190. Um, and I think we did 413 shows. And it's, it really was such a combo, the Jane and Lauren show. <laughs> Lauren is the fastest witted person yes, in the uh, world. She, she's very fast um, and, and has very good wit. Yes, oh, so in- she's lovely. Incredible. And you are incredibly thorough with your research. So the combination was an informative yet hilarious yes, program. It, um, it was a combination that worked well, but I suppose a lot of the the work on actually putting the program together fell on me I, because um, Lauren was working at the time and I wasn't, so I had the time. We've had a message through. Is Transmission Time the only trans-specific program on radio or was it the only? Um, it's not the only one. It's As far as we know, it's the oldest transgender program in the world. Um, there's another one running in Melbourne on one of the other community stations. Um, and there are a number of internet programs um, uh, uh, running in the US. But we were the only live-to-air uh, free to air and that's, at the time. Well, that's great news that there's more resources available for the mm. community. Yes. And so if people want to listen to the podcasts, they still can. Yes, they still Thank, can. Thankfully. Um, you can uh, go to the website. So joy.org.au forward slash transmission time mm. and you can um, li- have a listen and they still, they stand the test of time. Mm. So Jane... Joy is a radio station and a community radio station. Mm. So personally, as a young lesbian, Joy helped me find my place within the community. And so it helped me create networks of friends and build a career Mm. in radio. So for you as um, a M2F transgender person, how did Joy help support your journey? Um, I think it was basically acceptance. Um, not worrying about what my past was, um, but what, uh, I suppose, taking notice of the skills that I had. Um, I'm, I'm basically a trained electrical engineer, but I've spent most of my life working in, in communications and fibre optics. And um, I was able to use some of those skills, actually, to help put some of the station together. <laughs> and um, Not me- some, <laughs> oh, a great deal a of great, the Okay, a great deal. Yeah. But <laughs> with the help of, uh, of a few other people, um, I, I wasn't the only one who sort of did the legwork lying under desks and <laughs> whatever. But it was a... Um, I suppose a bit of a learning experience, a bit of a challenge, because it's the first time I'd ever done something like this, even though um, I've, I've been, I was involved for amateur radio for many, many years. So the radio part sort of came naturally to me, but, but this was a, a totally different setup. And uh, there were a lot of challenges, um, and I, I, th- I think we got, we got over most of them. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Mm. We have to. Yes. There's no option mm. other than to get over it mm. or else there'd be dead air and there's yes. nothing more boring <laughs> and than We that. didn't want that. <laughs> but, um, but I suppose uh, joy for me was basically, um, I, was, I suppose I was very nervous when, when I first turned up because I, I'd only just sort of come out of my shell okay. uh, as, um, as a trans person. Um, but I suppose it's sort of 
brought me out and developed me a lot. Um, we're very, very similar to some of the other organisations I've been in. It's been a long learning uh, curve, uh, both um, it, for me in finding myself, um, which which I now have fortunately, um, but but also putting some of my skills back into the community, mm. and and I find that very very rewarding. Yeah, and how important is it for? volunteers with an expertise to volunteer oh, it's at a, Joy? A, 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 a. I, I think it's very important for people to put back into the community some of the things that they've learned over the years. Uh, for, for me, w w with my technical skills, it's it's been, um, I suppose, very rewarding to see something finished at the at the end. Um, at the, uh, yeah, uh, in wiring up studio, and it all works. <laughs> <laughs> There's thousands of connections um, and a lot of design time. Um, I, I think about probably nearly half the time that I've spent here was actually doing drawings and documenting things. Yeah. And then you go and build it. You don't do it the other way around. And so what are the things that you're drawing? Um, well, uh, there's the, the studio next door, Studio 2, um, when we first started on that, there was a desk and that was all. And that's basically how you integrated the electronics into the, the rest of the system at Joy because it's quite um, – we have the ability to turn the studios on and off remotely. We can feed audio through between the different studios. Um, there, there's some quite complicated switching that's done. Um, but it's all uh, – but you know, when you come in, you push a button, it all works. Yeah. Um, but it's getting all of that to work in the first place. And that's the challenge. And you also have such a uh, an earth an earthly skill as well <laughs> that you added to that panel in Studio Two. Which, when I'm taking people on a tour, I always add and, and credit it to you. Oh, thank you. That you did the wood paneling. Now, this yes. this um, this panel also has it, as the viewers can see. Um, panels usually have this beautiful wood paneling mm. on the side. Mm. Now, the panel in Studio Two didn't come with that. That's right. So the, you the, um, the intention was to basically uh, make the desk, even though it was a totally different desk, we tried to give the same feel so that a presenter, no matter what studio they were in, the buttons were in the same place, you always turn the studio on in the same place, um, and you just try, just tried to make it look similar. Yeah, uh, and and I think that's very useful for uh, for people uh, when they're first um, uh, coming into radio. Oh, it's the same equipment. Oh, it's not, but it works the same, and that's the important thing. It all works the same. Yeah, and you did that successfully. Yes. So we've had a, a a great message through Jane, and I agree wholeheartedly with it. It says, "Great to see you back at Joy, Jane. It wouldn't be what it is without you." Oh, thank you. So, Jane, what are some of the things that you were able to achieve at Joy? Now, just my own recollection of a story you were telling me, were you involved in a tower climb or you were watching uh, someone no, um, climb a tower? No, I haven't climbed up any towers. Um, that would have been cool, though. <laughs> a bit dangerous. <laughs> I, I've climbed up a few ladders at, uh, at, at outside <laughs> broadcasts <laughs> in a mini skirt. <laughs> There's well, a photo somewhere, but I've never seen the photo. That's a bit raunchy. <laughs> um, I, I think some, some of the interesting things like uh, being up at the top of Melbourne Central for about uh, 12 hours when they turned the power off. Wow. Uh, and, and we had to keep the transmitter running. We had battery backed up supplies. And it was a mad rush to get all the batteries up there. Um, unfortunately, they didn't tell us when they were going to turn the power off. And I think we went off for about half an hour uh, out of about eight hours. So uh, we did pretty well out of that. Oh, wow. But it, um, but it was, a lot of it was just sort of sitting down, uh, sitting around waiting and listening. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't much you could do up there. Uh, it's, um, there, there's been a lot of late nights. Yeah. Um, um, I think some of the interesting things uh, I remember doing a um, a, radio, a comedy radio program for two hours on a Saturday night starting about 3 a.m. <laughs> uh, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> yes, I remember this. What was that in aid of again? I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Probably just the laugh. Um, I, I think it was something special um, and uh, a couple of us uh, decided that we'd do a two-hour comedy slot one night. So we played nothing but comedy. Excellent. So, Jane... What have been some of your lessons in life that you've learned through your connections at Joy? And the same as some of the other organisations in cooperation. Um, co cooperation, probably a bit of tolerance sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, 
if, if, you, if you want to get something done in, in, in a community um, situation, there's so many competing interests and often there's no real boss. <laughs> And so uh, it's a matter of sort of working your way around through through a bit of a minefield. But you get there. Um, uh, Money, I think, you know, negotiating with people, uh, it, it improves your negotiation skills. And uh, it's, uh, you know, you've got um, a goal at the end that you want to get to. And when you get there, it's lovely. Mm, <laughs> really absolutely. nice. So in your time at Joy, what mm. I've learned from you is that you are an inc- incredibly understated person. So, but yet you've achieved such grand things. I think that happens to a lot of people who work in the background. Um, uh, if uh, if the microphone sort of uh, stops working and you come in and fix it, it, it uh, people just I, I think just take that for granted. You know, so someone's going to fix it when it's broken. It's it's all the all the maintenance work that goes on behind any organisation, whether it be community radio, community TV, uh, that I'm also involved in. It, it's uh, it's all that background work that, that nobody really sees, but it's very important. Absolutely, it's important. So Joy's twenty. Yes. And I think I've been here for uh, about 12 or 13 of those years. 12 or 13. So looking back, what do you think you're most proud of for the organisation? Oh, probably the biggest single thing has been the shift from Coventry Street where, um, into nice and modern buildings, spacious studios instead of little cramped um, little boxes that we used to have. Uh, and, and seeing it all sort of come together as an organisation. Yes, and and being in, uh, for both of us, it, I'm so proud that we're involved in this historic mm. broadcast mm. as well. How huge is this? It's very good. <laughs> World AIDS Day worldwide. Yes. So any birthday wishes for us, Jane? Happy birthday too, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you want to connect with us, you can do that via World AIDS Day worldwide.org or if you're on Twitter you can jump on and use hashtag joy w a d or send us an email um at on air dot on air at joy dot org dot au okay so Jane just our last question if you um can give some advice to someone who's going through what you went through at the beginning of your um transition what would that be? First of all, seek good medical advice. Yeah. Uh, there is some bad medical advice and there's good medical advice. But um, don't lock yourself up. You, um, you need to get out into the community. And Joy was, was very good for that. Um, I, I never had anybody ever query me uh, uh, about my gender or my gender feelings. It's so uh, easy to do, though, isn't it? It is. When you're afraid. Yes. And... Um, it's those hurdles, it's those initial hurdles, and Joy helped help tremendously in that. In basically, uh, I was accepted for who I was, uh, I was accepted from my knowledge, not what I was. And that made a huge difference to me personally. And what about your family? Because I know that your family was involved in, in, in being participating in Joy. How did that help? Um, uh, my lovely lady um, it w- it w- it w- was involved for a while, but she had um, but she had some health issues, and um, she's she's basically dropped out of a, a lot of things that she used to do. Um, she's still doing a little bit of dancing to to keep up her balance because she has some very bad balance issues. Um, uh, for for her, I, I think it was um, also. Uh, acceptance by the organisation um, th- that she was a, a partner of a, a transgender woman, and. Um, and that was very nice to see. Yeah, and it was lovely to have her involvement because mm. it did. It kind of completed it mm. yes. to make it that whole family. Yes, I appreciate your involvement in today's special broadcast for our twentieth birthday, and also World AIDS Day worldwide. Thank you so much, Jane okay. Munro, our former broadcast engineer and transmission time presenter. Send- you're a superstar. Thanks, Lenny. Thank you so much. You're on Joy 94.9. My name's Lenny, and we'll be chatting to very soon Marg Gardner, former program manager and volunteer manager, and also our current vice president, Trish Kieran. You're on Joy 94.9. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. This is World AIDS Day Worldwide. 
World AIDS Day worldwide, live on Joy 94.9, hosting this global conversation. Email on air at joy.org.au just like Luke Gallagher has done. Thank you so much for your message, Luke. You are also a lovely man and incredible. Thank you so much for your contributions throughout the day. And you can do the same and contribute to today's special broadcast. Email on air at joy.org.au. Right now, we're joined by two influential women from an operational and governance perspectives. It's Mar Gardner and Ch- and Trish Karen, thanks for joining the conversation of 20 Years of Pure Joy. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hi. Thank you. So first, let's chat with a key player who steered the development of radio as a staff member for many years in the roles of program manager and volunteer manager and um, acting station manager when we've needed her to be. She's formerly known as Margaret, known by many as Marg, but mm, I like to call her Margie Marg and the Funky Bunch. Marg, welcome. Thanks, Lainey. It's great to be back in the Joy studio. So, Marg, what was it like being a woman in a leadership role involved in the early days of Joy? There weren't as many women as there are now. Um, and I guess there was a bit of, you know, a bit of a rumour around that it was a bit of a boys club and there were certainly men around, but I was welcomed with open arms and I started just as a volunteer who decided I wanted to do a bit of radio and was pretty quickly invited onto the programming committee. There were some wonderful pioneer women like Anita Gibbons and Carol Wilkinson who were already there and Carol was a great mentor to me when I started, um, and, you know, we had our moments, the, like all community <laughs> organisations, like all families, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I have to say that they were very few and far between. And because of everyone's commitment, we had a common goal. And that helped us overcome whatever differences that we may have had. And, uh, you know, I, there were times when I wondered whether I was in the right place at the right time. But looking back, it was a great experience. And you you brought up that, you know, there was often a perception of there being a boys club, but really it's important for people to know that community radio is about the community stepping up and saying, hey, I'm going to come in and represent my segment of the community. So it's up to women just like us to come in and and do it for ourselves. It certainly is. And I've certainly never seen anyone not welcomed because of who or what they are. And that's one of the great things about joy. Uh, And Jane was referring to that too earlier. It doesn't matter who you are, what your gender is, what you look like, what your colour, anything, you will be made welcome here. Absolutely. So a massive achievement for joy in 2003, I think it was, was receiving a large amount of funding from the Foundation of Young Australians to train 75 young people. And I was one of them. You were, Lainey. I was. So tell <laughs> us about that time at Joy. It was it was the vision of Kathy, um, who was the, vol- the first volunteer manager when we were full time, and she sought out the funding. It was a hundred thousand dollars from the Foundation for Young Australians to run accredited radio training, and the vision was that we knew that we would get old those of us that were there and any organisation is going to die without new blood and so we actively sought out people uh, 16 to 25 to participate in the radio training and it was the most phenomenal um, em- thing that we ever embarked on and uh, Adam Stobbs was uh, the lead trainer there and I know he'll be uh, watching today very proud of, of you as one of his babies as he used to call the trainees and of this station and what it's achieving today. Uh, it was it was great. It was a wonderful uh, injection of energy and talent and many of those people are either still involved in joy or doing things in other community radio stations. It is a gr- It was a great foresight of the people involved to to accept that they were going to get old because if you look at many social groups and organisations within society, you see them get older and older and older and yes. struggle with new generations coming in because they want to inject new ideas and then they die off and the organisation dies. So it was really quite ingenious of the organisation to do this and to be open to new ideas and to new people. It was and everyone welcomed it. 
You know, we didn't really have anybody that went, oh, how are you giving, you know, how come you're giving all these young people all this money? What about the rest of us? It really was a, a wonderfully accepted program. Yeah. Well, it brought a, a new energy into, Certainly did. into the radio station. And so it really was, um, I think, significant in that it gave the uh, media skills to young people to also represent themselves accurately at Joy at our radio station, but also it was clever of us too so that we could infiltrate mainstream media (laughs) so that we could influence how the gay and lesbian community are represented within mainstream media. It's true. You spoke to Paul Turdich earlier and he always joked that he wanted us to take over the world. (laughs) And I think that was part of his plan. Well, why can't we? Exactly. Yeah. So the license renewal in 2006, Marg, you came up with a wonderful idea. Well, I'm sure you and your team came up with a wonderful idea to get the community support. So share with us how you did that. It was really a follow on from what we'd done for the initial license, the the Love Letters program, because to get a community license, you have to prove that your community of interest wants you. Well, of course. And need you. And the, the reason we got the initial licence was because we had such community support. And while in some ways you know that you have to renew your licence every five years, and it's kind of a given, but if you don't continue to represent your community of interest and you don't continue to meet those needs, you're not going to get that licence. You still do have to keep on the ball. Um, so we just continued that process of making sure people uh, gave us some ammunition, if you like, or evidence of what was true. We didn't make up a thing. Everything was true. So the love letters, did any anyone or two stand out for you? Because oh, I remember you playing some of those love letters because we, we had some people voice them and had packages. Yep. And I remember you bawling your eyes out. <laughs> uh, like yeah. you couldn't talk. I, I was a bit of a crier, Lainey, it's true. <laughs> um, and the series was Joy Melbourne Makes a Difference in People's Lives. And yeah. look, we had, you know, young 16-year-old kid in Broadmeadows that couldn't come out to his family and used to listen to Joy literally under his bed covers a young girl that again couldn't come out to her family couldn't didn't have enough money to become a member but wrote us a beautiful letter about how she felt like she wasn't the only person out there and gave us a ten dollar donation because it was all she could out of the pocket money that she put together just story after story after story of people who who we really did connect with and who we really did make a difference in their lives You'll be pleased to know we're still getting letters like that. Yeah, I'm sure we are. And, and you know, you take phone calls. We've got letters like that and I can talk about, you know, numerous phone calls that we get for people that would go, I don't know where to go, but Joy will know. Joy will help me find where yeah. I need to go. Yeah. And we are certainly seen as a central repository of information. Yeah. I mentioned it earlier when speaking with Jane. We're not just a radio station. We are also a community organisation. So we do need to make sure that we're up to um, we're up to date with all the resource information, current events, because people were their first point of call. They will call us, what's going on on Sunday? When's the next rally? Where can I get information about, you know, um, inf- you know? Yeah, three phone calls I can give you very quickly off the top of my yeah, head. Thank you. I'm in town from Sydney. Where do I go to find a dance party and meet fellas. Um, I'm a nurse in Terelgan in Victoria and one of my clients has just come to me to say that they think they're transgender and I have no idea how I can help them. Can you point me in a direction? And a woman that rang from Queensland and I answered the phone and she said, my dad's 70 and he's just come out as gay and our family is falling apart. Where can we go for help? Not just a radio station. Not just a radio station. So, Marg. Lainey. Radio station equals... Big personalities, <laughs> <laughs> lots of egos as well, but we won't go down that path. So tell me some of the fun moments that have stood out for you. Oh, wow. Um, keep it clean, yeah? Keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep it clean. You can't put 150 people in a little melting pot of a very hot uh, studio and not have some moments. Um, and I... You know, look, I was always very big on confidentiality, <laughs> but lots of laughter, lots of laughter. I used to have a thing on my desk that said the best radio places, rest radio stations are the ones where the halls are filled with laughter. And I think the resounding memory for me is lots and lots and lots of laughter. Oh, goodness me. Yes. <laughs> That's joy. Yep. And people bouncing around and dancing in the office and... 
Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So it didn't look like a regular office, which it shouldn't. It's a radio station. So why is it important to become a Joy member? Because there are always people who will need Joy. There are always people coming out. Yep, we've got a very different society than what we had in 1993. And it's easier, but it's still not easy. And you always come out, even if you're a well and truly, you know, out and proud lesbian or gay person, you're always still coming out. Every time you go into a new situation, every time you get a new job, you meet new people, you're lo- coming out is a lifelong process. Absolutely. And there will always be young people growing up or older people making a discovery about who they are who will need someone to connect with. And I think the best reason to become a joint member, you are listening to and watching right this very moment that we can bring information and news that you won't get anywhere else. You will get the type of sports news you won't get anywhere else. You'll get the kind of news news you won't get anywhere else. You'll get people that reflect who you are and who you can connect with in a way that you won't connect with. And your community needs joy and we need you to keep going. Thank you, Marg. Thank you, Lainey. Thank you for your insight. Pleasure. So you can become a member as well by visiting (laughs) joy.org.au. So our next guest on Joy 94.9 on this very special World AIDS Day worldwide is our Vice President. Her name is Tresh Karen. But before we get there, I want you to know that you can email us on air at joy.org.au. And while you're there, you can check us out, all the visuals on worldaidsdayworldwide.org. Now, Trish, she's in the studio. She's made the effort. She's all the way in here for this very special broadcast. Why did you become involved with Joy, Trish? I became involved with Joy because... I found it on the car radio one day when I got in the car and said to my partner, is this a gay radio station? And she said, yes. And I went, oh, okay. And I started listening to it and they had really great traffic reports. The traffic reports (laughs) were what I absolutely loved, being in the car every morning, every night, and I got hooked on it from that perspective. So was the traffic particularly gay? No, it wasn't, but it was the best traffic report of any radio station in Melbourne. Thorough. And it still is. Right, awesome. Absolutely. Go traff. They mention other roads other than just the major freeways. Yes, we are good at that. Yeah, and so that's a really big thing if you're not travelling on the major freeways. Awesome. And so I decided that it sounded like a really good station to listen to, so I kept listening to it, and then I thought, well, I should become a member of this because it became very apparent it was a member organisation. They needed funding to keep going. And I've had quite an an easy life in in terms of my relationship coming out, those sorts of things. But I could recognise that other people might not have had such an easy life. And to me, Joy just seemed a great way to connect with people. Before Joy, Maz and I didn't actually really know anyone in the community either. So it was an introduction into the community for me as well. So Maz being your partner? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, so you became involved with Joy, you became a volunteer, and then did, did you become more confident? Did you feel more acceptance within yourself about your identity? Did something change? Yeah, it was a really big decision for me to respond to. There was a call for a casual vacancy on the board. And I'd been looking around at wanting to get involved on a board for, for a little while, and I'd, I'd done some education in that area as well. Okay. And I heard the ad on Joy and thought, I'd like to do that, but knew that that actually meant that effectively I was coming out at work because the moment it became apparent that I was going to be a director of a radio station that's a gay and lesbian radio station, it was going to be pretty obvious at that point. This is interesting, isn't it? Now, Mm. this happens, this conversation comes up with many volunteers. So whenever you volunteer at Joy, you're assumed gay, lesbian, bi, trans intersex yep. but we do have many members of our volunteer base who are not any of those letters mm, that we are do. members of the wider community who are straight and yep. support their active allies mm. of our community so of course you thought hang on people will assume yep. that I am that and so you had some fear surrounding that I, I did because I worked in a heavy industrial um, sector and the role I had, I, I needed to be uh, respected by the people that worked there. And I, I did have a little bit of fear as to how it was going to be accepted once the, um, the, the workers at the coalface, so to speak, actually found out. Are you comfortable with talking to us about how that yeah. they yeah. responded? Yeah, it, it didn't change a thing. 
Oh, wow. It didn't change anything at all. And, and it just kept going from, from strength to strength. I've since moved into uh, a new role since then and same sort of thing. It was coming out all over again, as, as Mark said, you for, are forever coming out. I'm about to take up a new job and I've just met all the new people I'm about to work with in the same process. Going through it all going again. Going through it all again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm so pleased for you that, that you had that experience what a relief for you it was and and as I said I've been very lucky I think um, there are people that don't have it that simple or that easy in life and for me that's what joy is is all about it's that place that they can go they can listen to you know that that kid that is listening that is not quite sure they're not alone yeah it's, and they're okay joy is a haven yeah. it's a safe if it's a safe space place for everybody and so a lot of volunteers that do come to joy as you would know not everybody uses their real name when they volunteer at joy because they feel like they have another they have another life outside of joy that's their straight acting life but when they come here they can be their true self they just change their name they don't have to worry about who they are known as here yep. and then they go out and it's all cool it's mm. all cool and so there are lots of logistics around that for people that we have to remember as managers and board members to make sure that this is a safe space for people so like photography and taking video yes. and and privacy of people's details so it's there's a lot to take into account so as a board member what kinds of things do you need to take into account about um, the direction of the station and the individuals within it? So my main um, perspective from the board is that I'm there to provide the governance oversight structure for the organisation. I don't volunteer on air. I I stay away from doing a lot of the the active things in the station. I prefer to work behind the scenes. Um, That's where I can really add the most value to the organisation. And so from that perspective, it's about understanding what's actually going on and supporting the operational team. I'm not there to get involved in operational matters. That's for the operational group to do. But I am there to provide strategy, governance, a sounding board at times, and to make sure that we do have the right systems and processes in place so that if something does happen, we can deal with it appropriately and to make sure that there's still money in the bank which is a very important part of it. Isn't it? Amen. So your passion as a strategic leader is, has been quite modest and yet you've achieved some, you've been involved with some grand developments with the organisation. Can you tell us about some of the board's achievements that you've been involved with? Yeah, sure. One of the first things I did when I joined the board was look around at the governance structures we had and felt that we were a little bit lacking in in a couple of areas because whilst we had finance uh, and audit covered by a committee, we weren't actually doing actively anything in the risk management space and an organisation just can't afford to continue on without proper risk management strategies and understanding what they are. So I initiated a risk management committee so that we could start to work through that process and by the same token one of the other risks is making sure that we have all of our people issues um, working well and that does mean that people need feedback and we need performance um, development and performance management as well. So establishing a performance committee where basically that provided the performance um, development activity to the general manager for them to then take it through the rest of the organisation as well. So I'm quite proud of bringing in those two activities into the organisation as well as the fact that for the last few years we've produced surplus each year which is also a fantastic achievement too. Thumbs up. Yep. And I've been involved in the performance review as well, so I can tell you that works. Good, good. (laughs) (laughs) It keeps us accountable. That's important. So, Trish, do you think joy is still relevant today? Absolutely. I think joy will always be relevant. Even if we end up being very mainstream in terms of um, accepted into the community, there will always be pockets of people that will struggle with themselves, not even necessarily with others, but they may still be struggling with themselves. And for those people, at least, joy will always be relevant because we are that that community group for them to, to feel safe. They can come here, they can be themselves, they can achieve amazing things as well through joy. So the Taste of Radio training that's done has trained a number of fantastic presenters that have gone on to other other careers, as well as just the fantastic people that we hear on air every day through joy. So there is something here for everybody and joy will always have a future. Absolutely. So we're 20 today. Mm. Where do you think we're, we're off to next? Oh, 
I would love to say digital. <laughs> <laughs> is radio enough? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think one of the benefits of radio is that it does allow a little bit of anonymity for people. So I think that's actually fantastic for people that do come in here and not necessarily want to use their, their real name or, or are not quite comfortable being out in certain sectors. The anonymity of radio being that we're not normally on camera um, means that people can actually be themselves and they can do what they, what they love and what they're great at doing here. So from that perspective, I still like radio. Um, is there something greater there? You know, it'd be fantastic if we could keep doing some activities like this as well, especially on such a momentous day. Yes, it would be nice though, maybe, yeah, once or twice a year. Yeah. Yeah, le <laughs> less makeup, hey ladies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so as a woman, um, what would you say to an uh, to other women watching and listening on uh, World AIDS Day Worldwide.org about the value of volunteering at Joy? This has been one of the most satisfying experiences that I've had in my life and you can't measure what you get back from it. You get back what you put in and, you know, if you're interested in doing anything involved in the community at all, come along and see us at Joy because we always need great volunteers and get involved. Be that person that can represent. Yeah, it's amazing what you'll get out of it. It's, it, it helps you in so many different ways. I agree. So, Marg, Lenny, Joy, again, is 20 years old today. December 1, it's our birthday. What were you like when you were 20? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> what happened at 20 should stay at 20. <laughs> um, I made a bunch of good mistakes when I was 20. Uh, probably still fixing some of them up now. <laughs> uh, I think, <laughs> and that's the blessing that Joy, you know, we've, we've made a few mistakes along the way, but we've learnt from them and uh, have uh, we're pretty grown up I think for a 20 year old organisation much more grown up than I was at 20 that's for sure we're mature we are mature we must have been mm. the only child I think so mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a lot of committed people to help bring us to where we are to mm. help us grow up helicopter parents perhaps maybe we certainly had a Trish, we used to have a helicopter runner do our traff reports. Uh, that was a gay traff report when we used to have the helicopter going <laughs> in the background. It was a very gay traffic report. It I was, remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Damien Nicholas and his, I forget the, what it was called now. Yeah, helicopter cross, uh, crosses to the helicopter doing the traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. We won't ruin the illusion for you of how we, we actually did it. No, 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 no. So you as a 20-year-old, what, what were you doing? Were you working? I Were you was, at uni? I uh, must have been towards the end of teacher's college. Might have been my last year of teacher's college. Were you college. married with kids? I was not married with kids. No, I was Set still working scene. out who the hell I was. Right. Um, probably doing something I wish I hadn't done. But we won't go there, Lainey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot to learn at 20, I think. I had a lot to learn. I was confused and messy at mm. 20. I think they're th those words describe me at 20 as okay. well. Okay, yep. 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 Um, I wish I was a bit more like Joy at 20. Had a bit better history. <laughs> no, the history was all right. Um, had a bit more sense of who I was and where I was going. That would have been nice. Well, thank you. Trish, you can't avoid it, mate. Oh. What were you like at 20? I was at uni halfway through an engineering degree which means that I was spending a lot of time playing pool and drinking beer. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to be a little bit more sensible than us. <laughs> no. And trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. So, yeah. I'm still doing that. <laughs> so am I. Did you figure it out? Or? No. Right. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> so, Joy, um, so what has Joy done for, um, for the community in the last half of its year that stood out for you? Look, I think what it's done for the community is is to connect the community. Um, and I think that's where radio is so good because it's a personal medium and it's intimate and it connects people. And it connects all the organisations in the community through our CSA program, all those things. I think connection is its greatest achievement. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Trish and Marg, for your time today. And thank you to all of my guests today, to Paul Turdich from Singapore, Jane Munro, our former engineer, and to both of you ladies. Thank you for your chat today and celebrating at Joy's 20th birthday on World AIDS Day worldwide on Joy 94.9.